Oh uh, hi. It's a bit odd this, isn't it? Well, we're going to try something different today. Um, what I'm going to do is show you how to service a pair of secateurs. Now this is really important. If you want to be doing your roses and anything like that, there's my secateurs. Do -do 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 oh, I, I know. I can't help it. I just like having a bit of fun with this. These are Felcos, Felco 2s. Now Felco 2s is plush make. They're very good. And I like them. And I've had them ever since I started seriously gardening. Now, they do need servicing. They don't last forever without servicing. So, you're going to be looking sort of a bird's eye view at me servicing secateurs. Now, on these, we've got the spring. It's always nice to take that off. Still in good nick. And then I've got my little lock here that I'm going to put my screwdriver on and undo. It's important to get the lock off. Now if you're nervous around blades or anything like this, not a job for you. But uh, there. I think I need a slightly thinner, thinner screwdriver. Yeah, that'll do nicely. This, by the way, is an impact driver. As some of my uh, students will know, it's when you get something really stuck, then you, you can give this a, a whack on the head and it will loosen up most stuck bolts. Okay, now I've got lots of bits with this, so I'll put them all carefully there. You don't want to do this anywhere where you're going to lose bits. Now this is the wheel lock on it, it's a little claw thing. Then after that, if I can just start to move it, these things usually end up stuck in some way. There, I think I just about shifted it. No, it looks like I'm going to need a spanner on that. It's nice to be well prepared. There you go. And that's coming off. These, by the way, are bypass secateurs. If you're too worried, take a picture first. Costs nothing nowadays. And then that can come off. Now, inside there, you can see some water's got inside there. Ooh, it's starting to rust it away a little bit. Now this side I can never get off on Felcos, they always seem to seize on very quickly. So I use some very fine sandpaper. What I want to do is remove some of the rust. All the way along here, just lightly. Don't want to damage it in any way. But what you do want is to get rid of some of that rust. There, that's the rust. If you want to be a little bit, this is not a Brillo pad by the way. Um, you can get plumber's steel wool, you get it from most hardware shops, works a treat. It's great for cleaning off gently all these bits of rust. There we go. That's quite nice. Don't need it this side. It doesn't half look nice though. There you go. A nice clean pair of secateurs. If you're working in a garden and you're a gardener for anyone, Customers love to see it. 90% of professional secretaries are all bypass, not handle. And there is your blade. Now, check on this blade. Can you see? Mine's quite good condition still. All the way going along there, that part. Because this isn't that sharp. This, however, is like a knife. And this bit really is sharp. At least it ought to be sharp. You can get replacements. So if you broke it, it's not a problem. You have to send off for them, but you can get replacements. For most of the big makes anyway. So I'm just going to clean this off one last little bit. 120 sandpaper I use. Because all you're doing is taking all the sap that's come out of the tree branches and um, bits of rubbish like that. And a little bit of rust. And you just want to wipe them off. Don't do that side, 
because you'll blunt them just that side like that now this is an oil stone with an oil stone you need some oil however ordinary old cooking oil old chip fat works just as well so what I like to do is just polish it off make it nice and flat take off any high points that are going to stop your secateurs from closing and you know if you've done a good job because uh, if you pause this if you get a rag got loads of them in here there we go there now you can see if I can catch it up to the light oh that was a nice bit of light there you can see I polished all the way along that edge it's quite clean there's no nicks out of it there is big nicks out of this bit then you've got to file it down with a file right the next thing you've got your blade there well again it's all covered in sap and god knows what else Watch your fingers on this, remember it's sharp. I always do the inside of the blade first. It's not really sharpened, that's the bit that touches the other bit of the blade. And if you can see, even on my dirty bench, you can see you've got loads of stuff coming off. Now most of that's not even rust. It's all dry bits of tree sap, because I've been doing the apples and roses. And the reason I want this nice and tight and tidy is because what I'm going to do next is black currants and the black currants I'm going to take as cuttings which is an unconventional thing to do this time of year but you'll find a lot of the professionals do it there you go and it's cleaning up nicely Really, you should only need one pair of secateurs in your lifetime. If you need another set of secateurs and another set of secateurs, you're just not getting good enough pairs of secateurs. And it's worthwhile spending a bit of money. It saves you a bit. I think these are about £40, £50 pounds now. Seems a vast amount of money. But uh, you've got to remember I'm a professional gardener and it's the tools of my trade. There you go. So I've cleaned up the blade. It's not ever as clean, but you can see it's a bit shinier. I've taken all the sap off it. <coughs> I like to just to clean them wide up. I mean, in this little video, I haven't really got a vast amount of time. So we'll see. And I, I can feel that. It's beginning to edge over a little bit. But what I always do first, polish the back side of it before you do the bit you sharpen because if you do that you'll see any high points and the high points will show up well I look after my secateurs there's not any high points on it but quite often there is and you usually get high points because you lend it to someone and they start to cut steel wire or something or use it for a pair of tin snips but, uh, here we go so that's nice. The next thing I do, now, this is always an awkward bit. Now you can see how it's clawing away. That's all the high points on it. Never touch the blade, always work backwards. And the slope on them, I would say, if you can see, I'll take it a little bit closer. You really want to take it that sort of angle. Yeah. Yeah, so you're looking. It's quite cute. There. It's not critical. Don't grind it because you want the smallest, smallest amount of metal off. Too much metal and they cease to work anymore. So if I stuck it on the grinder, which is next to me, oh dear, would that be a problem? 
there you can see I'm beginning to bring up some color <coughs> you can see oh look at that oh that's taking a nice picture isn't it there and that is sharp enough and what I do I like to put some grease on it <coughs> do, 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 do. if I can find some grease Oh, lithium grease. Grease, we can get in little tubes. I've got in a big messy container. On second tiers, I like this hard grease. Simply because of the fact on a hot day it doesn't melt all the way. And then you put that on all the bits you need to. Put some other blades as well. Oh, I'd probably clean that up. And this is the peg as well, so I want to take that out. Put a bit of grease on that. Don't try and clean all the uh, rust off that, because if you do, you end up making it too small for the hole it has to go in. So it rubbers around. So, there you go. And... Gosh, awfully greasy old stuff, isn't it? And then we do that. That should go in there in the pegs, in the locator pegs. Do -do. Oh, there you go. Sits nicely. The other side on. Don't slack on the grease on this. You always wipe it off. But you can't get it into them little corners if you never put it in in the first place. Yeah. And here we go. Conscious I'm taking a bit long on this grow jet. I'm really sorry about this. But then you want to put on your plate, your lock plate. Which if you can remember which way it goes up. I think it goes on that way. Whoops. And he's blocked it. Ah. Right. Lock plate. That's the lock plate. Where the lock goes on. I think that's it. If not, I'll film it again, won't I? And the big nut goes on the top. Tighten it up. You can always adjust it later. And then you put the locking claw on, and that locks that wheel in position. And then, of course, you've got the. Uh, don't forget that little washer otherwise the lock's very hard to put on and there that's the lock for your secateurs your safety lock well okay now i'll sit there and do it all together in a minute but as you can see you've got your secateurs they're nice and easy they're well greased up i'll put the spring on which is ever so easy to get on and I'll tighten everything up. Just make sure they're nice and loose in your hands. They will loosen up, you've just greased them, you'll have to tighten them again in a few days time. Okay, servicing secateurs. Thank you.